Hey everybody, uh, my name is Paul Anthony. I'm here to talk to you about Bitcoins. Has anybody heard about Bitcoins? Every, oh, cool. a lot of people heard about it. Awesome, awesome. So basically Bitcoin is um, the currency of the internet. Let's see. It's um, a peer-to-peer -peer electronic cash system, open source, innovative payment network. Innovative payment network. Um, basically, it's like gold plus email. Gold, digital gold. It's uh, sound money. It's got no, no back, nothing backing it. No government, anything like that. It's pure person to person. Um, what is Bitcoin? No central authority, no banks, um, and it's carried out collectively by the network. It's open source, public. Nobody owns or controls Bitcoin, and everyone can take part. Now you're probably wondering, first question is, um, who created Bitcoin? Well, it was, it's actually not that new. Um, back in 1998, Wei Dai suggested it, um, it, a new form of money, a cryptocurrency. It wasn't implemented until 2009 by um, Satoshi Nakamoto. But the thing is, no one really knows who Satoshi Nakamoto is. He's, it's just a, um, just a handle. Um, some think he's a person, some think he's a group. A lot of people have tried, but um, he disappeared. And it's an inter interesting story why, um, when he disappeared. It was actually around a time when, what was it, WikiLeaks. When you know, the US government was after WikiLeaks and Julian Assange was asking for donations and they froze his, um, his account. So WikiLeaks started accepting Bitcoins. And uh, of course, uh, Satoshi pleaded with them not to because he was he felt that um, Bitcoin wasn't ready for that kind of pressure from the government. <laughs> so, uh, but he but um, Julian did it anyway. So after that, he disappeared. He didn't want to be you know in the in the spotlight and having the U.S. government go after him. So <laughs> um, this is the original white paper by Satoshi Nakamoto. It's this is an abstract. Just uh, read it real quick. It's a little technical, but um, basically, Bitcoin is a purely peer-to-peer -peer version of electronic cash. Um, would allow online payments to be sent directly from one party to another without going through a financial institution. Digital signatures provide part of the solution, but the main benefits are lost if a trusted third party is still required to prevent double spending. We propose a solution to the double spending problem using a peer-to-peer -peer network. The network timestamps transactions by hashing them into an ongoing chain of hash-based proof of work, forming a record that cannot, cannot be changed without redoing the proof of work. The longest chain not only serves as a proof of the sequence of events witnessed, but proof that it came from the largest pool of CPU power. As long as the majority of CPU power is controlled by nodes that are not cooperating to attack the network, they'll generate the longest chain and outpace attackers. The network itself requires minimal Structure messages are broadcast on a best effort basis and nodes can leave and rejoin the network at will, accepting the longest proof of work chain as proof of what happened while they were gone. Um, what, the, what it's talking about is actually a, a Bitcoin miner. Back in the, uh, back in the, when Bitcoin first started, the hash rate was really low. Um, not a lot of miners were doing it. And you could actually just hash with your CPU. Um, then came along GPU mining. Someone figured out how to mine on GPUs, which was a lot more efficient, and orders of magnitude um, more powerful. And, um, and that basically wiped out or made redundant or annihilated um, CPU mining. Actually, this right here is um, my old GPU miner. This is one of the, I guess, one of the nodes that runs the network and clears transactions. But now the current generation is ASICs, and even that has made GPU miners obsolete. So that's the that's where we're at today. Um, okay. So how does Bitcoin work? From a user perspective, everyone has a Bitcoin wallet in the form of a mobile app or computer program to send and receive Bitcoins. Behind the scenes, Bitcoin network shares a public ledger called the blockchain. This ledger contains every transaction ever processed allowing a user's computer to verify the validity of each transaction. Right. Um, its advantages, it's that it's instant peer-to-peer -peer transactions, worldwide payments, 
zero or low processing fees. For individuals, Bitcoin is the simplest way to exchange money at very low cost. And for businesses, it's a very secure and inexpensive way to handle payments. And developers, Bitcoin can be used to build amazing things or just answer common needs. Ah, okay. For individuals, um, furthering on that topic, mobile pay payments are really easy. You just use your cell phone. You can have a QR code and you just scan it and send a payment that way. Um, security and control over your money. The difference between Bitcoin and credit cards is that all you need to charge a credit card is the, the number and the CV, the little security code in the back, and um, basically anyone has access to your money. But with Bitcoin, it's uh, protected by uh, military-grade encryption. So not anyone can just access it or freeze it you know, or take it away from you. Um, it's also very fast international payments. One of the funniest um, recent stories I've heard is that someone was going on vacation. He was um, from Brazil. He went to vacation in Germany. And he went to a, uh, a restaurant that accepted Bitcoin. And he called up his friend in Brazil you know, and scanned the uh, QR code, sent it over to his friend. And his friend from Brazil paid for his meal while he was in Germany. That's one of the craziest things about Bitcoin so far. Zero low fees. Um, there's no enforced fee, but if you want the transaction to go a little faster, um, you can pay a smaller minimal fee. And with Bitcoin, there's, um, you can protect your identity in, in ways that, um, that reg traditional payments can't. And it's a, it's a good way to protect your privacy when you want to pay for something online, say you don't want people finding out about it. Let's see. No PCI compliance. All right, for businesses. No PCI compliance required. Um, Bitcoin is secure. There are no chargebacks. There's no costs. It, if you have to get a credit card, you have to go to this process, go to the bank, get the little Swipey machine, and you know, all that. But with Bitcoin, all you need is a, uh, a cell phone, free software, the, um, a QR code so that people can scan it and send the money to that address. And that's it. You're ready to accept money. It's free. It's easy. I don't think you even need a computer. You just need a paper that has a QR code that has your wallet. And people can send you money that way. Super easy. Also, um, being an emerging market, Bitcoin is an easy way to get free visibility. Um, the Bitcoin community is very loyal and very um, enthusiastic. And they will... They, it's, it makes big news in the community. Every time a business accepts Bitcoin. I think recently there was a guy um, in Allentown or one of the uh, subway, he had a subway. It, it's not the franchise, but he just, you know, he had a subway and he accepted Bitcoins. And so people were coming from all over the state just to go to his subway to pay in Bitcoins. So that's uh, one good thing about Bitcoin. Um, accounting transparency, it's a public ledger, so everybody can see. How much is go how much goes in how much goes out it's all digital so there's there's no there's no need to to do any of that stuff um, let's see for developers it's the simplest of all payments accepting money is as simple as sending a link or displaying a QR code um, great option for donations and tips as we saw with uh, WikiLeaks that's how they were accepting payments even though their visa and their traditional um, payment accounts were closed, their funds were frozen, and Bitcoin was the only way that they were able to get funds. And um, yeah, many third party APIs. Um, and this may be stretching it a bit, but maybe, I guess you could say you could be your own financial system. Um, <laughs> or, you know, as they say, be your own bank, but that has its good and its, its bad. So I'll explain that in a little bit. Um, of course, you can use Bitcoin addresses to track invoices. It's public. It's all on the ledger. It's all on the blockchain. And oh, and um, cheap micropayments, like 
Not a story I told you about the guy who sent, uh, who paid for his friend's meal in Brazil. I mean, in um, in Germany, from Brazil. That's uh, you, know, you can do that with um, with Bitcoin. You could probably pay for, I don't know, someone's meal overseas or something. But there are some things you should know. Um, Bitcoin, Bitcoin isn't perfect. And if you plan to get into Bitcoin, there's some very, very important things you should know. One, one of those is to secure your wallet. Um, there's been lots of stories of high profile Bitcoin heists and thefts that have happened. And it's, the problem is that we're not used to, um, most people aren't used to securing information that's valuable on their computer. I mean, these are, um, these wallets, these keys, they're worth, I mean, one Bitcoin right now is about $900. So you've got, I don't know, thousands, hundreds, <laughs> just sitting around in your computer. And, you know, if you have a Trojan or a hacker or if your computer gets hacked or if your account gets hacked, um, it's very easy to lose those coins. And... A lot of those services that are online, they're not, F, they're not like traditional banks. They're not FDIC insured. So there is an issue with that. Um, another thing is that Bitcoin price is volatile. Um, I'll show you an example of volatility later. But basically it means like, you know, you can, you can have crazy gains with Bitcoins and you can also have crazy losses. So that's, that's one of the things that you have to consider or take into account. Um, they're also irreversible. So if you send, if you send a Bitcoin to someone, and you can't get it back, you can't reverse it. You can't call up, you know, bank and say, "Hey, that was a mistake. I didn't mean to do that." No, it, you can't do that. Um, you can call up your friend and tell them, "Hey, send back those Bitcoins. I sent them to you accidentally." That, you know, if if they're if they're nice enough, then yeah, they'll they can send it back. But um, other than that, for the most part, they are not reversible. And it's also not anonymous. A lot of people think it is. It's, it's semi-anonymous in that it's very easy to, um, to hide your identity, but it's, it's not built in. An anonymity is not built into Bitcoin. And all transactions are on the, black, on, on the, uh, on the blockchain. So it's very, it's very public. And every, everybody can see where all the money is going. Um, instant transactions are less secure. What they mean by that is that um, the blockchain, that public ledger I was talking about, updates every 10 minutes. So if you want like a really instant transaction, um, let's see. Every time it updates, it makes that last that last transaction more and more secure. So let's say you're just um, sending a dollar. That's okay. You don't really have to wait. I mean, it's just a dollar. But if you're going to send like a million dollars, then it would be worth your time to wait two hours, get those uh, 12 transactions or those 24 transactions in. It just depends on how much exactly, how much security you want, how irreversible you want that transaction to be. Um, and it's also still experimental. Like they say, Bitcoin is still in beta. It has it hasn't really been um, officially released yet. We're still we're still in that stage where it's it's like the internet before there was a browser, basically. Okay, this is what I was talking about with volatility. <laughs> so this is the uh, the crash from the um, from the April bubble. So it went from around ten dollars here. To $266 high, and in just three days, dropped to 50. Now this is a uh, this is price data from the Mt. Gox exchange. What happened here was that um, at that time Mt. Gox was the only exchange, and basically they got um, DDoS, uh, or they 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 got attacked basically by hackers, and so it went down, and people panicked, sold, and you know, and in three days it dropped to 50. So that's that's the volatility. That's what I mean when when I say that Bitcoin is extremely volatile. Uh, this year, this year that was just uh, this last April. Okay, no problem. Um, let's see. 
Okay, and this is this is more recent. This was just a couple of days ago. Um, we hit an all-time high of 900, went down to 450, and you know went back up. So this is this is what I mean by volatility: great gains, great losses. You know, as long as you don't buy here and sell here, I think you'll be all right. <laughs> okay, so this has been this is the overall Bitcoin price trend. From uh, from the beginning, where it was worth less than a penny, to um, I think around here, this is the price bubble, um, the 2011 bubble, the April bubble, and this is where it, this is um, the current levels today. Um, each period represents one week, so um, it does honestly it doesn't really make sense um, looking at it from a linear perspective because the thing is, Bitcoin um, grows exponentially. So what we need to use to understand um, Bitcoin's growth is a logarithmic graph. Where see this is the beginning. And this was this is the um, let's see, the 2011, the 2011 30 dollar bubble. This is the uh, April 266 bubble, and this is where we're at today. So it makes a lot more sense or yeah, when you're using a log logarithmic graph. All right, and this is going to be the last slide. Um, just this is what I'm going to leave you with real quick. This is just a um, just some future predictions. It's you know past performance is not a predictor of future trends. I just have to put that out there. But if the trend continues, um, we should see solid thousand around August. Who knows? Be around ten thousand by September and. Um, another 100,000 by 2016, if the trend continues. And, I mean, you know, I'm not a fortune teller, so I can't really tell you for sure. But this is this is what it looks like. All right. And if you want, you know, more information in general, you can. This is where you can find it. Okay. Any questions? Yes. So I imagine you're using bitcoins. What do you uh, use bitcoins for? What do you buy? Um, I've I've bought a domain name in the past. Um, that's that's one thing I've bought. There's a lot of things you can buy. Um, personally, I don't really buy a lot with bitcoins. I trade them. I um, I kind of just play the the mar the market and you know see where it goes. But yes. Hmm. Well, actually, this is one of my minors. Um, I got in pretty late in the game, but um, I got in right when GPUs were starting to become unpopular, <laughs> and ASICs were starting to to come in or starting to starting to rise. Um, I would say if you wanted to get into mining, there are um, mining companies. That have stocks. Um, I think ASIC Miner is one of the popular ones, and it's they're Bitcoin denominated, so you can actually buy those stocks with Bitcoin. Um, um, this rig, um, for um, for script mining, it's a little under two mega hashes. Yes. Right. Um, oh yeah, that's a good question. Um, bitcoins are divisible up to I forgot exactly how many decimal places. Eight decimal places. The satoshi. Right. Up to an eight decimal places, and we call that um, they call that the satoshi. Um, but if you want to make it easier, a thousandth of a bitcoin is. A milli Bitcoin, and that's a little bit under a dollar right now. So. Well, 
you don't know what was bought with those bitcoins, but you can trace the bitcoin to when it was born, when it was made. Because see, bitcoins are made, um, are mined every 10 minutes. There's, I think, 25 bitcoins every 10 minutes. And you can actually trace every bitcoin back to when it was mined, when it came into existence. Yes? How and where do I find this bitcoin? That's a good question. Um, there are several areas, there are several places. Right now in the U.S. It's, ve it's very limited because of a regulatory pressure from the government. And um, so it's, it used to be Mt. Gox. Um, Coinbase is a popular option. Um, you can go in local bitcoins and buy them from someone personally. And let's see. You, one, one thing is you can't really buy them with credit cards because um, credit cards have chargeback risk so, and bitcoins are irreversible. So a lot of, what a lot of them scammers have done is buy bitcoins with a, with a stolen credit card, get their bitcoins and, you know, and not have to, and basically they get free bitcoins. So that's one danger. You can, you can. If you have a product or a service, you, you can um, advertise and say that you accept Bitcoin, and that is one really good way to accept Bitcoin. Let's say I have a cost of mining of one Bitcoin versus like doing that, or providing a service. Because right now, I guess competition is too high, or how does that work? Like, is, is mining at all possible anymore? It's still possible, but... Um, it's 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 possible, but I wouldn't say I wouldn't guarantee that it's profitable. You might be able to break even in a few months, but as far as actually making huge profits and making you know, um, I wouldn't I wouldn't really say that. I mean, I there's been the, there's been arguments where um, should I put my money into buying bitcoins or should I get into mining? So let's say you invest you know two thousand dollars into a mining rig versus two thousand dollars into investing in Bitcoin. Um, some people argue that it's more profitable to just put your money in Bitcoin. Some people say that um, a mining rig is is the way to go. So, just depends on you know risk, <laughs> market fluctuations. Yes. What kind of security? Um, Oh, okay. Um, actually, Bitcoin is actually already quite secure. I mean, the um, um, it's actually protected by cryptography, military-grade cryptography, um, specifically um, SHA-256, which hasn't been cracked yet, and is actually um. I know there were some some um, um, some cryptographic curves that were recently um, announced as um, I don't know that the NSA kind of set up, or they kind of put back doors into some of those um, electric, elliptical curve um, cryptography. But uh, um, actually, but Bitcoin wasn't one of them. That's the good news. So yeah, it's uh, it's actually quite secure. The protocol itself is secure. Now, whether your computer or your phone is secure, we don't know. <laughs> That's the big question. Are there any actual companies, big companies, using that sort of thing now for transactions? There's, there's many companies that use it. Um, actually, the Google of China, Baidu, recently started accepting Bitcoins. Um, let's see, who else accepts Bitcoin? Virgin. Right, that's right, Virgin Gal Galactic recently started accepting Bitcoins. Um, WordPress. That's right. WordPress accepts Bitcoin. If you want to get into Bitcoin, you don't want the uh, the volatility of Bitcoin. What you can do is um, is go to a payment processor like BitPay, where you can accept Bitcoin, and they will immediately convert it into dollars. That way, you don't have to, you know, watch the market or see where the price goes. There's a company called Bit, B -Y -S -T. That's correct. <laughs> right. That's right. Um, in fact, I saw one. I think it it got taken down, but I think there was. There was one company selling Walmart gift cards, so you can buy groceries and gas with, with Bitcoins. That was pretty cool. But 
recently I checked and um, I think they took that down. That's that's actually a really good question. Um, and during that time, back in April, Mt. Gox was the only um, was the only exchange, and that was one of the arguments um, was that it was a central point of failure, and that's how I felt about it too. But today we have three major ex exchanges, actually four. Um, we have we have Mt. Gox; they're still around, um, although they do have insolvency issues. So, kind of. See what's going on there. Um, we have Bitstamp and BTCE. Well, Bitstamp in Europe or Russia, somewhere there, and BTCE in Russia. And we have, um, I think, BTC China is the other big one. And China, that exchange is the one to watch because the Chinese are going crazy for Bitcoins. They can actually buy Bitcoins with credit cards over there with their version of PayPal. So that's, a very, uh, that's something to really keep an eye on. Um, there are a couple exchanges that are popping up here in the U.S. I know Camp BX is one of them. There's Virturex in um, in Canada. Actually, the um, the financial reg regulatory environment in Canada is actually more free than America. So there's like they recently they just had um, their first Bitcoin ATM or the first Bitcoin ATM in Can in Canada in Montreal. Invented, made in Las Vegas, but you know, due to regulatory pressure, they had to. Run it in Canada. That's right. <laughs> That's um. There's rumors. There's a, there are some conspiracy theories that Satoshi Nakamoto actually stands for NSA and that it was you know. That's right. That's right. Yeah. They confiscated a lot from Silk Road. And I think they have Ross, Ross Ulbricht's um, personal stash now. So, yeah, the U.S. government does hold a significant amount of Bitcoins, which is kind of interesting. Maybe now it'll be in their interest to see it succeed. <laughs> that's, that's true. That's true. That is one of the, uh, yeah, that's, 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 a, that's, a, that's a good point. Just like how Tor, they have uses for Tor. It was actually originally made for their agents. Um, Bitcoin is a way to transfer value to some of their co covert operatives. So it has its goods and it has its bad. Yes? No, you can buy you can buy increments. You can buy any any amount. Um, you can you can buy bitcoins up to eight decimal places. Um, you can buy a satoshi if you wanted to. You can buy a milli bitcoin. You can buy ten penny a pennies worth of bitcoin. You can you can actually you can buy any amount. It doesn't matter. Yes. Uh huh. That's true. I've even heard that the, uh, the eight decimal places, the Satoshi limit, can actually even be. <laughs> yeah, they can actually change it as software. Right. Um, and yeah. they do have um, um, systems in place to prevent those kind of transactions, those dust transactions. You guys have additional questions? Let's get them out before we go. All right. Let's all thank Paul. Thank you.